Welcome to my talk. I'm going to talk about round optimal blind signatures. This is a joint work with Shuichi Katsumata, Shota Yamada from AIST, and Takashi Yamakawa from NTT. This is a short summary of our work. We present a round optimal blind signature protocol. Our protocol has three desirable properties. First, it does not rely on any trusted setup such as the CRS model. Second, it is based on standard assumptions. We use both classically and quantumly secure tools. Lastly, it does not rely on complexity leveraging. First, I review what is blind signature. Blind signature are digital analog of sealed envelopes with carbon copy seat. In blind signatures, there are a signer and a user. A signer have a public verification key and a secret signing key. A user has a message. The user puts the message into a sealed envelope with carbon copy seat and sends it to the signer. The signer signs on the C envelope without opening it and returns it to the user. That is, the signer does not see the message M. The user opens the envelope and gets the signature for the message M. Blind signatures are crucial building blocks of privacy preserving crypto systems. We need blind signatures to achieve e-cash, e-voting, anonymous credentials, and many other privacy-preserving cryptographic protocols. There are many blind signature protocols. Most protocols rely on trusted setups such as the random oracle model and common reference string model. Fishbauer et al. and their follow-up works presented blind signatures without trusted setup, but they need strong interactive assumptions. Land optimal blind signatures without tr any trusted setup from standard assumptions are impossible, but there are some conditions on the impossibility results. Gag et al. presented the first blind signature protocol without trusted setup from standard assumptions by using complexity leveraging. They use complexity leveraging twice. Gag and Gupta use complexity leveraging only once by heavily relying on pairings. Our protocol is the first protocol that achieved the three desired properties. We overcome the impossibility result by using quantum power. There are two security requirements on blind signatures. One is unforgeability. In this security game, a malicious user runs queue signing processes with an honest signer and gets signatures. If the malicious signer cannot get Q plus one or more signatures, then we say the protocol is unforgeable. The other one is blindness. In the security game, a malicious signer generates a key pair. An honest user chooses two messages and flips a random coin. The user runs the first signing process with the message chosen by the coin. Then, the user runs the second signing process with the other message. The user gets two signatures and sends them to the malicious signer. If the malicious signer cannot correctly guess which signature was generated via the first signing process, we say the protocol satisfies blindness. I'm going to 
explain the basic idea of our protocol. The starting point is a proto protocol by Gag et al. An overview of their protocol is as follows. The signer generates a key pair of standard signatures. Then, the signer and the user run a secure function evaluation protocol, where the signer's input is the signing key and the user's input is the message. The user gets a signature and the signer gets nothing. We need to prevent malicious behavior of the signer, such as using bad randomness for signatures. So, we use zero knowledge to force the signer to follow the secure function evaluation protocol with the signing key and the committed PRF key. The blindness follows from the soundness of zero knowledge and the receiver security of secure function evaluation. Yeah, the unforgeability follows from zero knowledge and the sender security of secure function evaluation. However, proving the unforgeability is a bit tricky. There are a few issues in proving unforgeability. First, we want to prove unforgeability of the blind signature by using unforgeability of standard signatures. But the reduction cannot pass a message to its signing oracle because the user's message is hidden by secure function evaluation. Gag et al. resolved this issue by using complexity leveraging. That is, we assume signatures with super polynomial time security and use a super polynomial time reduction in the security proof. Then the reduction can extract the message by breaking the receiver security of secure function evaluation. The second issue is two move zero knowledge argument is impossible. We need two move zero knowledge to achieve a round optimal protocol. Pass overcame the impossibility result by using super polynomial time simulators. Gag et al. used the technique by pass. A super polynomial time reduction extracts the message and runs a super polynomial time zero knowledge simulator. Our first idea is we use quantumly secure cryptography instead of cryptography with super polynomial time security. A quantum polynomial time reduction can break the receiver security of secure function evaluation and extract the message. The work by Kalai and Klana inspired this idea. However, simply using this idea does not work because we need to use complexity leveraging twice in the protocol by Gag et al. We will see this issue more closely later. You might think that we can apply the technique by Kalai and Klana to the protocol by Gag and Gupta since we use complexity leveraging only once. However, all building blocks of their protocol must be pairing based since they use specific algebraic properties of the gross high proof system. So the protocol is not compatible with quantum simulation. We saw two move the large argument is a crucial building, building block. So we focus on this primitive here after. We review the two move the large argument by pass. It uses the well-known or proof trick. The verifier chooses an input of one-way permutation f and compute an output z. Then the user sends randomness for zap and z to the prover. Zap is a public coin to move witness indistinguishable proof. The prover generates a dummy commitment and returns the commitment and response for that. 
the statement of ZAP is as follows. The statement X is true or COM is a commitment of the pre-image of Z. The latter statement is for simulation. We construct a super polynomial time simulator for proving zero knowledge. The simulator breaks F by using super polynomial power and gets the pre-image Y. Then the simulator generates a commitment of Y and that proof by using the witness Y. The modified commitment is indistinguishable due to the hiding of commitment. Using a witness for the latter st statement is indistinguishable due to the WI property of that. Thus, zero knowledge holds. Next, let's see soundness. This follows from the soundness of that and the one wayness of F. We construct an inverter algorithm for F. The inverter uses the instance Z as a part of the first message and extracts the pre-image from the commitment by using super polynomial power. Here, note that the former statement is false in the soundness setting. The learning time of the inverter must be much shorter than the learning time of the zero-knowledge simulator. In the protocol, we use complexity leveraging twice. So let's see the relationship among learning time of reductions. The zero knowledge simulator runs in time t and need to break f. The inverter for f runs in time t prime and need to break the commitment. So there are three security levels. Using quantumly secure cryptography works for two security levels, but not for three. Now, let's see our design idea. We introduce the notion of a blind signature conforming zero knowledge argument in this work. This is two move zero knowledge argument. First, we replace commitment in passes protocol with public key encryption and generates a dummy ciphertext for that. The encryption key is given to the verifier before the protocol starts. So this is not the plain model, but this is okay since we consider the blind signature setting. The prover corresponds to the signer in blind signature and can register the, the encryption key as a part of signer's public key. We use non-uniform security of F as gag et al. to prove soundness. Non-uniform algorithms are two-stage algorithms. At the pre-computation phase, the algorithm computes an otherwise string by unbounded computational power. At the online phase, the algorithm is given a problem instance along with the otherwise and tries to solve the problem in polynomial time. That is, the inverter can get the decryption key as an advice in the non-uniform non model. The signer's public key is given before the protocol starts. That is, before the, verific before the verifier sends Z to the prover. Therefore, we can construct a non-uniform reduction to F such that the decryption key is given as an advice and extract the pre-image from the ciphertext of CTP. An issue is that a prover might maliciously generate a key pair if the public key EKP is ill-formed, Ill Ill we cannot extract Y from the ciphertext of CTP. Here, the PKE scheme must be quantumly secure since we consider quantum polynomial time simulators to use quantum power. However, there is no 
quantum re secure PKE where we can efficiently recognize that a public key is honestly generated. So, the verifier also uses PKE. The verifier generates a key pair and sends the public key as a part of the first message. The prover also generates a dummy ciphertext and the verifier's public key. The OR part of the ZAP statement is also modified accordingly. Thus, even if EKP is maliciously generated, we can extract Y from CTV. However, this incurs another issue since the verifier cannot register the public key. So EKV is not certified and it could harm zero knowledge. To prove soundness, we want to guarantee that we can extract the OR part witness Y when the prover cheats. So we use lossy encryption and another zap to handle this issue. The prover puts the first message of zap in the public key. This is okay since the first message of zap is reusable. The verifier generates a key pair of lossy encryption and sends the public key and the zap proof as a part of the first message. The second ZAP statement is like this. Lossy encryption public key is lossy mode or EKP is ill-formed. I defer explaining how to prove this statement. To prove zero knowledge, we use the former statement. In zero knowledge, EKP is honestly generated since the prover is honest in this setting. So, EKV must be lossy mode and ciphertext CTV gives no information and does not harm zero knowledge. To prove soundness, we use the latter statement. In this setting, a malicious prover generates an ill-formed PEKP and the former statement could be false. So, we use the injective mode of lossy encryption and extract the pre-image Y from ciphertext CTV. Note that the injective mode and the lossy mode are indistinguishable. There is a subtle final issue. In the soundness setting, a reduction cannot decide whether the ZAP proof from the malicious prover really violates the soundness of ZAP or not. To efficiently check the winning condition, we put another public key of PKE in the prover's public key. The prover sends a ciphertext of the witness W as a part of the second message. The statement of ZAP is modified and guarantees that the witness W is encrypted under the new public key. We also use non-uniform security of PKE. A non-uniform reduction can extract the decryption key behind the new public key and puts it and then otherwise. So the non-uniform reduction can efficiently check the prover violates the soundness of ZAP or not. Lastly, we explain how to prove an encryption key is ill-formed. We can achieve such a proof for regex PKE scheme. In regex PKE, a public key consists of a basis of lattice L and a vector V. A secret key is the closest lattice point to the vector V. An ill-formed public key means the vector V is far from lattice points. Halonov and Leif showed that a lattice L and a vector V constitute an NP language if V is far from lattice points. So we can prove a public key is ill-formed by ZAP. However, 
there is a subtle issue since their proof system is for gaps languages. A malicious prover may choose a public key that is not far from lattice points but not close to them. In fact, we can define a secret key for such a public key in the gray zone. Such a secret key is sufficient for extraction. Therefore, the proof system works in our protocol. Let me summarize my talk. We present a round optimal blind signature protocol in this work. It is based on standard classical and quantum assumptions and does not rely on any trusted setup. In addition, it does not use complexity leveraging. We introduce several interesting techniques to achieve our protocol. In particular, we introduce the notion of blind signature conforming zero knowledge and use the quantum power in reductions. We also use a proof system for ill-formed public keys as a crucial tool. That's it. Thank you for watching my talk.